How do you know when you are ready to get into a new relationship after a toxic one? <laughs> um, I would say it really depends on how much that toxic relationship affected you because you really need to work on yourself, make sure that you don't have any problems with yourself before you're ready to take on somebody else. But let's just say in your toxic relationship, you know, you were not the problem at all. Any percent, you're zero percent you're claiming, then you're fine to start a relationship as soon as you're over that person. Um, but let's just say you have things to work on. Like, for example, me, I had to work on being alone because I didn't know how to be alone. I hated being alone. I was quick to like latch onto somebody and basically like get something from them because I didn't like being alone. So I had to face that, work on that before I was able to take on Sophia. So that's my advice. It really depends on that. And so you have to be real with yourself. And if there's problems, you need to seek help. Whether that's talking to people, any type of therapy, just go do that, figure it out, because you truly can't be in a successful relationship unless you figure those things out first and you're completely happy within yourself, okay? If there is one thing in life you could have an endless supply of, what would it be? I'm guessing you're not talking, like you're talking about like things you can actually like hold, like physical things, because I would say happiness, but I'm pretty sure you don't mean that. Um, so I would say money, money for sure. And I'm, I'll say to the day I die, money does equal happiness. It's not everything, but it does equal happiness because for instance, if you have, if you have the money to make sure that your lifestyle is good and to make Make sure that your kids are good. Make sure that your family is good. That makes you happy. If something happens to your grandma, God forbid, tomorrow, you have the fun to take care of that, right? Like that would make me happy. I don't know if that make you happy, but I'm sure that make me happy. So money does equal happiness for sure. Endless supply of money. If it wasn't money, it'd probably be an endless supply of money, probably. What are you doing at Coachella? Uh, I am a spokesperson for a couple of brands and they're using me and they're bringing me out to work for them, basically. It's cool because I get to have all the content for you guys. I'm going out, I'm going out there with my brother. Um, it's going to be a movie. It's going to be a great time. Um, and it's just a great opportunity for me and my job and networking and the people that want to meet with me and talk to me. And it's good to always show face. So that's what I'm doing at Coachella. Because honestly, I don't like things like that. I don't, I'm not a fan of Coachella. I'm not a fan of Rolling Loud or any type of like festival. I'm not a fan of concerts. I, I would never just like want to watch somebody perform. That's just like not my vibe. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm doing. So, When did Sophia get the tattoo for you? And will you get a tattoo for her if you don't have a secret one already? So a lot of you guys, since I posted that last night, a lot of you guys were asking about that. I want a story time about that. So... When Sophia gets back today, I'm going to let her talk about it herself on that story. Because it's a crazy story. But she does have a tattoo for me on her butt. And I don't have a tattoo for her yet. Um, but that story of why she even got there, how she got that is actually really funny and crazy. So I'm going to let her speak on that when she gets home. Today, she's actually like doing hella stuff for Coachella because she's going with us. She's literally doing a whole thing. Like nails, makeup, hair, just women stuff. So it's crazy. Is your GF Latina? Um, she is Peruvian and Italian. And you guys met her mom. Well, I showed you guys her mom when I met her for the first time, which is about a few months ago. But her mom is like really, really cute, really funny. Uh, I love her personality. She's like a really nice Peruvian woman, accent, all that. Uh, she was really welcoming. Um, so she's, yeah, her dad's Italian and her mom's Peruvian. I don't know if that makes her Latina. And I don't know if I can speak on that because I'm not Latino. So... You let me know what you think. Is she Latina or not? Actually, I want to know what you think. How do you make your teeth so white besides brushing them? Like, what do you use? Okay, first off, I am not certified, verified, whatever, to speak on this because my teeth are fake. <laughs> my teeth are faker than your grandpa's. Okay, let's just be real. Um, so I can't really speak on that. These are porcelain veneers, very expensive porcelain veneers. Okay, I had my, done, my teeth redone twice. Why am I teeth done twice? Done the first time. I had a redone recently. You guys who are lifetime supporters, long time in my community, you guys already know the deal. Um, but let me show you what I do use because that might be useful. Don't 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 lie to my tag because I didn't take it off yet. All right. It's really Sophia's hat that she had on Coachella coach office yesterday. Whatever. All right. So number one, this this is our like new toothpaste. 
is what we've been using, and Sophia is like all about the healthy stuff. So this is ClinPro 5000. Um, 1.1% sodium fluoride anti-cavity toothpaste. Because the truth about veneers is that even though your teeth are fake, you have to take really, really good care of them, better than you would if your teeth were real. Secondly, the water pick. Okay, this shit hurts. I hate this. I hate flossing. I hate all that stuff. But my dentist used to say, it was like a really, really good Beverly Hills bougie dentist. If I could choose for someone to only brush their teeth for the rest of their life every day or only floss, it'd be flossing. That's how crucial flossing is. So I started doing it because I'm not, I was like never flossing before. Never. Okay. Oh, last thing. Let me show you the last thing I use. This one I forget to use. I'm not going to lie, but I do use is the the tongue scraper. So my tongue's not really white, so but this use this works. So use that. What are ways a man knows when a woman likes him back and vice versa? Okay, well Kyra, I'm guessing you're a woman. Sorry if I'm mistaken. I'm guessing you're a woman. Maybe trying to prove to a man that you like him back. Um, what are, that's a good question. What are ways a man like? I mean, I feel like pay attention to what he likes pay attention to what he says what he's passionate about um definitely have trying to prove to a man that you like him back um what are, that's a good question what are ways a man like i mean i feel like pay attention to what he likes pay attention to what he says what he's passionate about um definitely have a good communication like be wanting to talk to him he should not always have to text you first he shouldn't be always asking you to hang out it should be like working both ways you guys should both want to do that um and yeah, like just basically showing that you care by being there, being communicative, showing energy, like you're putting energy into it. That's how you know someone cares. So when I'm texting somebody, they're always replying. Well, I have a girlfriend now, so you know, I'm not in the streets. <laughs> but when you are, you know, when you're texting someone and they're always texting back, they have a good, a good line of communication. That's very crucial because if somebody wants to talk to you, they're going to talk to you, period. Um, just making time for somebody. Making time to hang out with them is crucial. Things like that. I'm not the most, you know, probably maybe not listen to me as much on this question, but that's just my advice personally, okay? Is marriage in your plans or is it not for you? Um, it is for me. But let's just be honest here. So my plans, first off, are to be married to Sophia, to, to, to do the whole thing, to be married, okay? But let's just be honest. I don't think any man, let's not say every man, okay? And I'm not trying to sound like a dickhead here, Okay? But every, no, I don't think a lot of men grow up like saying like, oh, I can't wait to be married or I can't wait to be a husband or, you know, I can't wait to have a wedding. I think that's weird. That's but but that's what women say. Women dream as girls to be married. They dream of having a wedding, dream of being a bride. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that's a woman thing. I think a man, when they get in that position, they love a woman enough to give her those things for her to be happy. And of course it's gonna make me happy. Of course it makes the man happy. I'm not saying it's just for the woman, but it's more so for the woman than it is the man. Because when it, when it comes to, in terms of commitment, a ring or being married does not make me more committed to someone or not. Like that's just what it is. If a man wants to cheat on you, it doesn't matter if you have a ring on or not, he's gonna go and get some other cheeks. Okay, that's just, let's just be real. Uh, a ring's not gonna stop at nothing. I think that the commitment is more so on or that commitment is wanted more for so the women that's why it's like always like women are constantly breaking up with men because they're not marrying them fast enough they're not popping the question they're like i want to be married i want to be a wife i'm tired of being a girlfriend you know what i'm saying so a lot of men i feel like you love a woman enough to give her that because i can still serve her and do all, and do all these things without being married but my goal and for my life is to be married to sophia i do want to serve her in that way and be a great husband and give her the wedding of her dream and all of, all of these things that is for me. I'm not saying it's not for me. That's just my opinion. I think that when you see a man um, do all these things and, and be married and have all these big things, I think he loves a woman enough to do that. I think it's a way bigger deal for a man to be married than it is a woman. That's just facts. And that's just my opinion. Well, I think it's facts. <laughs> but it is my opinion. This is what it is. So don't take that in the wrong way. But yeah, yeah that's what I think. Hook my man Austin with some of your girl's friends. <sighs> Hook my brother up with some of my girlfriend's friends. Hmm. How do I feel about that? I mean, I could try. I just don't know if they're able to handle it. That's a, that's a lot to handle. You know, it's a lot going on for that young man. Um, 
Um, I can look into it. Maybe I'll post some of the options on here for you guys to see if maybe that's something we could try to introduce. Because it actually would be cool angle. It would be cool if like, you know what I'm saying? Um, I still have to evaluate if he's ready for that. Like really, really ready for that. You know what I'm saying? Because he's still fresh in the he's still fresh back in the pond. He's fresh back in the streets. Okay. So I'm gonna post some pictures of her friends on here, and then you tell me if one's a good option for him. Okay. Sophia might not like that, but hey, it's my brother. Whatever. First off, this is the last question of the day. Okay. Let's get into it. What did Sophia look like before her BBO? Okay. So I want to let you guys know something really funny. So I had a meeting with Snapchat recently, not that long. Okay, and they told me because they can see all the analytics, they can basically break down my whole channel, my whole page, my whole community, everything. Okay, they said my most asked question in the last six months, which is really since me and Sophia have been dating, has been questions about her BBL. And the number one question is, what did she look like before her BBL? And that's the only reason why I'm asking this because I've talked about this before. She's talked about it. She showed you pictures, all these things. But my community is growing every day. A lot of you guys are new to it and you guys have questions. A lot of you guys are actually curious and want to know. And she's actually gotten so much love in the last six months on being on speaking so much about her procedures that she's had and talking, being honest, the, the, the bad side and the good side. Because a lot of you guys, like that, that information is really valuable because a lot of people who have that, which is probably literally 90 5% of the girls that you watch and follow online have work done. They just don't speak about it. Some do, but most don't. So I think it's really valuable the information that she actually gives to you guys. And a lot of your community have given, a lot of my community has given her so much praise. And I thank you guys for that. And uh, I'm going to post some pictures just for you guys. And this probably is my last time for at least another six months. Maybe we'll come back to this. But I'm going to post some pictures for you guys on what Sophia looked like before her BBL. Okay. See you guys.